Greetings, friends and followers. This is Nurses Talking. I am Del Barzi. As always, if you like what you see and hear, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think and subscribe. Here on Nurses Talking, we speak to nurses anywhere in the world and at any stage in their nursing journey. And today it is my great, great, great pleasure to welcome Sarah Dawkins. Sarah is a nurse, a holistic health coach, an author, a podcaster, um, and she, you're an entrepreneur. Yes, I am. And an entrepreneur. And Sarah is talking to me this morning from Alicante, Spain. So welcome, 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 Sarah. Thank you, Des. Lovely to be with you. It is my absolute pleasure, really. It is. I've looked forward to this for a little while now. So firstly, let's start with why you became a nurse. What brought you? My mum was a nurse. And, and I, I like the idea of helping people in their vulnerable times. So um, I went to do my nurse training and I was told I didn't have the qualifications necessary because I, I did well at school, but I didn't like school. Mm. So I left without <laughs> any qualifications. So me being me, I went over and above what I needed and I did A-levels rather than O-levels. I went to college for a year, did those okay. so that I was more than qualified to be accepted to do my nurse training. But mm -hmm. it was a process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you came to nursing because you, you saw your mom as a nurse and that sparked something in you. But... Seeing someone, especially someone close who's a nurse, and actually being a nurse, kind of different. So was it what you thought? Yes and no. At first, my very first placement, I went on a colorectal ward. <laughs> I walked in through the doors and the smell hit me and I'm like, I don't know if I'm cut out to do this. And this was like six weeks into my training. <laughs> But I did, I did, and and I am so pleased that I did because you know I've, I've met some beautiful people and I've helped some some wonderful people to take back control of their lives and and heal and and leave hospital. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is, I, and that's the thing. I think I think that as we go into this, um, we go in with the knowledge and the feeling that we want to be of use, we want to serve, we want to help. Um, but we just didn't know, A, how much it would require of us, and B, how much it would actually give back to us. Yes, yes. It, it requires pure dedication to it because you can come across some, some taxing, challenging situations. But, you know, to deal with those and see the people involved come out the other side, it yeah. is so rewarding. Yeah. When you see those people coming in in one state and leaving in a totally different, improved, better, more normal state, that is knowing that you've helped them on their way. Is It really does nourish the soul. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. But what were the challenges for you, though? Not enough staff. That's a big mm -hmm. one. Um, a, a heavy, heavy workload um, was another. Um, not always being able to take a break. Um, for me, my biggest challenge initially was working nights because I'd never worked nights. Um, so that was a real struggle for me because when I went into nursing, I, I slept 12 hours every night. Mm -hmm. If I got mm -hmm. 10 hours minimum. I liked a lot of sleep, so to, to totally turn my world around and, and be sleep deprived, I found incredibly challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes with these challenges. What would you like to see change? You've been a nurse for like 20 years now. What would you like to see change? I'd like to see more focus put on holistic healing. Because we tend to only look at the physical, you know, are, are people eating the right food? Are they staying hydrated? Are they getting the exercise? Sometimes uh, in, in mental health specifically, they're looking at the mind and what's going on in the mind. Occasionally we'll look at the emotional side of, of, um, of 
their lives and healing, you know, what is going on within their emotions. We never really ever look at their past and what they've been through and what they've had to deal with and what they've suppressed. And rarely ever do we deal with their spiritual side. Um, although they've found chaplains in hospital, uh, I know the UK isn't as religious as America. So they are there, but I've found that the it needed to be asked for um, unless I used to, if I thought the person was a spiritual religious person, I would often suggest, but sometimes that suggestion was never made. So we never, we never really access that spiritual side of healing. So I would like it to be a lot more holistic rather than just medical model. Here's your symptoms. Here's a, um, some pills or here's an intervention. I would like, to look at their lives more in general. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, you, you talk about us um, kind of being hands off with the spiritual and there, there's something um, uh, in our, I, I'm not sure what it is, but somewhere in the way that we are nurtured or, and raised that says, um, you know, keep your hands off the spiritual. It's um, it's a private thing. It's not something to touch. It's not something for you to encroach on. And we almost feel as though we are, even when we um, are being very, um, very intimately personal with someone in the physical sense, um, if we just tend to stray into the spiritual, we think that we're encroaching. Yes, and, and everybody has similar or different beliefs you know yeah. so you're not always certain what somebody believes in um, yeah. and, and we can we can irritate people we can trigger people mm -hmm. by saying mm -hmm. the wrong thing and when they're in that that vulnerable position in a hospital we need to be very mindful of what we're saying and and, and anticipate how that might be received yeah 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 and 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 allow the freedom to um express or to use that their own spiritual beliefs to nurture themselves yeah yeah so seeing that we're talking about this you are a, a holistic health coach yes i am and i'm saying i'm seeing that that came out of your belief in nurturing a holistic you know being a holistic practitioner um but what did that entail for you did you what did you come to that? How did you come to that is probably the question I want to ask. It came through my suffering. Um, I went through some, some really dark times um, and dropped into depression and had suicidal thoughts. I burned out my adrenal glands and my thyroid became underactive. Um, having had antidepressants when my son was born for postnatal depression, I didn't want to go down that route again. And plus I'd started to learn about how we can support our body to heal itself um, through the physical, the mental, the emotional and the spiritual. So in saying no to the doctor that I, uh, for the antidepressants, I had to find a way to heal myself. I knew I could, but obviously in that depressed state, you, our, our mind shuts down. We can't think logically and rationally all the time. So it took me a while to get there. Um, and as I look back now, I realize I, what I was doing was practicing mindfulness and gratitude without even knowing what I was doing at that time. And that helped me on my own journey to heal the depression. And as I started feeling better, I then started thinking about what I could do and did some meditation and, um, and, and tweaked my diet and lifestyle a bit more then. And the, the better I'm feeling, the more I'm able to do. And out of that, I thought, well, I can help people to help themselves by writing about it. So I started my own um, writing about my own journey to try and help people to see that it is possible we can heal ourselves. And the more I healed, the better I felt. I thought, we can, we can take back that responsibility for our health um, and our lifestyle. And, and I thought, I need to help people to help themselves to do this. And that's what converted me, thinking rather than just do the same things and get sick and take pills, we can change the way we frame our lives, the way we look at it, and 
take that responsibility back. So, so I actually trained as a, as a coach and now I help people to help themselves the way I help myself. That 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 that's awesome. That's awesome because I know, um, or at least I don't believe that that was an easy journey. Because yeah. when you when you say no, I'm not going to take these meds and and all of that. The first thing you get is a pushback, and you yeah. get pushed back from a the, the the practitioner, and then you get pushed back from the people around you who care. Yes, who really yes. care about you and 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 saying you know you're not helping yourself. No, exactly. And because my mum was a nurse and, and, you know, she's all about take the pills, take the pills. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to find a way. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, so, yeah, there is kickback. But, you know, when you just when you've got that belief deep inside you that you can do something, yeah. Yeah. you need to just follow that. Yeah. Yeah. When you know that, you know that you've got this. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that takes some getting to, you know, that takes uh, getting to that. It's it's um that in itself is quite a journey. Yes. Yeah. From from believing that when I'm sick, I need a doctor and medicine and a diagnosis to mm -hmm. when I'm sick, I'm like, so what's the root cause? What is my body trying to tell me? What are my symptoms screaming at me for? Yeah. Um, and, and it's about finding the root cause rather than just taking a pill, which is like putting a, a, a Band-Aid, a sticking plaster on it and not healing the root cause. Then it's just going to keep manifesting back in the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One way or another, it will. One way or another, it will. So, <clears throat> oh dear, excuse me. Um, You have written this fantastic book. I started reading your book, I have to tell you. And it's it's quite um it's quite captivating. Thank um what what I what I what I notice about it, even from the, the, the preface and the and the, the forewords and stuff like that, is that it you have so impressed um people from, from word one with, with what you have to say that you know it's very hard to put it down. I mean, I you know you're kind of preaching to the converted, I will say this when I say that I'm reading your book, but at the same time, even if I were not on that same path, um, I think it would have, it's very impactful. So thank you so much for that book. And for anyone looking, it's called Heal Yourself. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. That's so kind. Yes, it is very impactful. I love it. And you do public speaking as well. Yes, I do. Yeah, to, to awesome. keep sharing the message that that we can heal ourselves and mm -hmm. and sharing people healers who've already done it to help other yeah. people to see that it is possible and we yeah. can heal the things that doctors say we can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for your public speak, you have a podcast called the same thing. Your podcast is called Heal Yourself. Yes, Heal Yourself with Sarah <clears throat> Dawkins. Yes. Yeah. I haven't I haven't had the opportunity to listen to any um, episodes yet, but I know that you're talking to people who have walked that same path and who have healed themselves from some, you know, something chronic, something dire, some, yeah. Yeah, a whole range of people. Some of the healers in my book are on my podcast, some people that I've met on social media, people that I've met in the street. Anybody that's healed themselves, I, I want to share, to show the listeners that, you know, yes, we can heal the little things and here's people doing that. We can heal the, the chronic things and here's other people doing that. And we can heal the life-threatening things that doctors say we can't. And here's yeah. some more people doing that. Because when, yeah. we, when, we, when we see something that, that we think is impossible, it helps us to turn our beliefs around that actually maybe it is possible because here's somebody that's done it. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. And and in the process, we do not necessarily have to traumatize ourselves and our bodies to get it done. Because no. very often what's prescribed and given to us is traumatic in and of itself. It is. That's awesome. What would you say though, having done so much, what would you say is the greatest achievement so far? Um, I think for me, when I set up my first business as a nurse entrepreneur, 
I, um, I'd done my master's at university and one of the teachers in my class said, why don't you join the graduate entrepreneur scheme, um, which will help you develop as an entrepreneur, because I knew nothing about setting a business up. So I did that. And I'd written um, a protocol for nurses to extubate patients in the recovery room. Now, I'm, it's normally in an anesthetic role mm-hmm. and, and nurses were doing it in the recovery room. And there was no local guidelines, there was no national guidelines. So I wrote based on um, anesthetics and ICU protocols. Um, I wrote some guidelines and got intellectual properties for a flowchart that I designed and started selling that. So as I joined the Graduate Entrepreneurship Scheme in the university, I was then asked to showcase my business in front of some businessmen with some of the other entrepreneurs. And I'm like, holy moly (laughs) first of all i've got to learn powerpoint i mean i'm going back a few years like what is powerpoint (laughs) (laughs) i did all of that and i won an award for company to watch because they said i've made something out of nothing i've Mm. literally written a protocol so that was my first award and then as time went on the um, graduate entrepreneurship program said oh there's this national freelancers day in the uk we think you should apply like wow you know winning a local award in the university is one thing but you know applying (laughs) to a national who am i to do that anyway i sat on it for a few days and then decided well why not why not Mm -hmm. applied and i came second in the uk's national freelancers award day in london and i was just like over the moon (laughs) so that was that was a, a a huge pivotal part of actually I'm worthy I am an entrepreneur I am an award-winning entrepreneur I am here and doing good yeah 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 I was just about to say that that in and of itself is further proof that you can do what you can do (laughs) yes yes It, it was like validation not that I should have needed it but I was I hadn't started my own healing at that point so I really didn't need that validation that I was good enough yeah yeah and sometimes we need it often we need it often we need it so Having done all of this, what advice would you give to someone who wants to be a nurse? It's long hours. It needs dedication and compassion because not everybody will see the um, client, the service user, as you do. I saw everybody as my family and I treated all my clients and service users as my family. Um, And I would only do to them what I would expect to do to my family. Um, Not everybody sees clients like that. So have compassion in your heart for everybody. Um, But know that the work is so soul nourishing, so fulfilling. Um, There are times when you won't be able to go to the toilet. There are times when you won't be able to eat. But the work in itself is soul nourishing and and it's worth every moment of it. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is. You just you you reminded me when you said there are times when you won't be able to get to the toilet. You reminded me of something I hadn't thought of for years. Oh, maybe not years, but for quite a long time, actually, because I used to say that if I were ever to go into insurance, I would only insure two things and it would be a nurse's bladder and their feet. (laughs) (laughs) So we're talking about, well, it almost seems superfluous to ask you, but what do you do other than um, being, you know, giving so much because you do give a lot to people. What do you do for you, specifically for you, to care for you? I, every day I walk the dog, we've got a little two hour cross who's right by my feet now. And um, I walk her twice a day in the morning and in the late afternoon or evening, depending on what time it gets dark. Mm -hmm. And that helps me. I'm out in nature, just me and her, just walking, listening to the bird song, listening to the bees on the flowers. What, you know, more often than not, the sky's blue and the sun's out. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, 
downtime, I'm in nature, I'm regrounding myself. Um, and that is my time for me, even though I'm walking my dog. It's 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 just that is what nourishes my soul as well. Just that time out, just downtime. I fully, fully, fully understand that. Because that is my thing. I, I say frequently, yeah, and I'm sure people have heard me say that before, that being outside in nature, just doing anything, sitting, walking, looking at the water, you know, looking at the leaves, anything like that is, is my um, communion with the Almighty. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, you mentioned, um, I was going to ask you what, what one, what would you say is the most essential quality of a nurse? But I think you already just said it. Compassion. <laughs> compassion. Compassion. Yeah, absolutely. Compassion. So what, what is your big dream now? What is your vision? What would you say is your vision for the next five to 10 years? Um, so I've already making waves and started organizing a retreat here in Spain with a friend of mine. Um, so that is a way to get people together um, and do some concentrated small group work. Um, and I would love to speak from a stage or a platform to impact more people with my message that your body can heal itself and it does it more efficiently when we support it. Um, and I would love to do a TEDx talk. Love to. All right. Well, I'll be on the lookout for those. <laughs> I'll be on the lookout for those because, you know, I, I really am a firm believer that once we start articulating those things, and that's one of the reasons I ask that kinds of questions. Once we start articulating those things, they come to pass. We yeah. somehow start, to, we start, we give root to it and start yeah. to make it grow. So congratulations on that. I will be on the lookout. Thank you. <laughs> Sarah, before we go, is there any words of wisdom you'd like to leave us with? Make sure you look after yourself. Whatever that looks like, whatever you like to do, whether it's a, a sitting down with a cup of coffee, taking a bath, taking a walk, you know, whatever nourishes your soul outside of work, make sure you look after yourself because it's all too easy to, to give so much of yourself you can burn out. So take those moments back. With, it doesn't have to be a, a holiday jetting off, you know, a new phone or it, it can, it's the simple things in life. It really is. So whatever you love to do, do more of it. Thank you. And on that note, thank you so very, very much for this conversation. I've truly enjoyed it. Thank you, Dale. Me too. It's been a blessing to see you and speak to you. Yeah, same here. <laughs>